I've seen my students start to connect more dots than they had before, even if they've been through the academy. They're like much more quick to recognize what's going on with someone. I think it's just really valuable, but it takes time, right? And adult learners don't have a lot of time. <laughs> so that's that's the thing is, is trying to organize the material in a way that the adult learner could come on their own time, spend 15 very valuable minutes of interacting with the material in a lot of different ways, and then, you know, slowly start making it their own. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. You are listening to another episode of the Barbell Logic Podcast. Today I am hosting, this is Andrew Jackson, coach at Barbell Logic. And I am joined today, this morning, Saturday morning, with uh, Rebecca Krieg. Good morning. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. <laughs> today, I wanted to talk to you uh, because I'm pretty excited to have recently launched a uh, new online learning environment, Master's Anatomy class, and have also been working with you this year on our new academy curriculum overhaul as well. And so I just wanted to kind of talk to you about uh, that process and what it's been like for you uh, working on that project, both the, the new curriculum and then kind of your lessons learned. But uh, before we dig into that, let's, uh, it's been a while since you've been on the co- podcast. I think it was like 2018, maybe you were on last time. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> so Becca, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and uh, what you do at Barbell Logic? All right. So I am Rebecca Krieg. I've actually been with Barbell Logic since the very beginning yeah, um, day one. when Matt started the company. So I've been around a while. I've been strength coaching since probably, hmm, when did I first start? Probably like 2013, end of 2013, mm-hmm. I think. Um, so I got my start in CrossFit like a lot of folks, but um Caleb actually introduced me to strength training and the, you know, uh, as, as a priority rather than just conditioning, which is what I was doing before. And so we actually ran a gym together and, uh, Caleb's my husband, also a black coach. If those of you who don't know, we were in a small town called Lock Haven for a couple of years. And then we moved to state college, which is where Penn state university is. So that's where we are now. We have a small gym. Um, but most of our work is probably online coaching mm-hmm. and obviously during the quarantine, it's been all exclusively online coaching. We're about to open our gym in July. So we're getting back into some in-person training, which we're excited about, but, um, Very cool. I worked before that I studied, um, biology in college, uh, definitely had an interest in anatomy there, but, um, also got my physical therapy assistant certification and worked in physical therapy. I've been doing it for almost 20 years now, I guess. And when I started into physical therapy, it definitely was an interest of mine to, you know, help people get stronger, recover from injury. That's kind of why I got into physical therapy in the first place. But working in the profession and knowing its um, shortcomings, uh, when I started strength training, and it actually really changed my shoulder, I was having shoulder issues at the time. That is when I um, knew that strength training was a more impactful way to change a person's life and help them towards health. So I actually, um, had gradually just, I think I was working both physical therapy and strength training until two years ago. And now I've just been exclusively a strength coach. And that, would you say that's the bulk of your knowledge of anatomy has come from working with people practically, uh, as well as, you know, having a formal education background for the uh, physical therapy assistant. Yeah, absolutely. So, so when I first started like, like academically pursuing strength coaching and looking into all the resources you could about learning about how to do that well, mm-hmm. it actually, um, fell in line with the way I'd been educated as a physical therapist, because you're used to watching people move. And definitely what I came to really think is that the level of anatomy that we learned as a physical therapist assistant was actually very applicable for a strength coach. Mm -hmm. We actually don't go as deep into it as a PT or an MD will, 
but the, we focus on the extremities, right? So the upper extremity, the lower extremity and how that applies to function. So whenever I think of strength coaching, I, I think that background has helped me immensely, especially just thinking about biomechanical analysis, but also just when people have difficulty Mm -hmm. understanding and appreciating anatomical variance between person to person, whether it's anthropometry or, you know, the way their bodies put together definitely helps you coach them how to move better. So that got me kind of, you know, thinking about that. And then as the Academy came about with Barbell Logic, and of course, anatomy is, was, has always been one of those parts of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Um, I was excited to help develop that a little bit. Yeah. So let's, you know, talk about a little bit your background with the Academy. You've run four classes now, three classes. Um, I think I'm on five or six, five. Okay. Yeah, wow. Five, at least five. Yeah. So you, uh, we started the Academy in, uh, we're coming up on about two years here in a couple of months, um, year and a half, probably about now. And so you've run five classes and it was late last year. I, reached out to you to, to help in developing our kind of what we're calling curriculum 2.0. And we've been working on that for, for six months now. Yeah. Um, and then you've also, uh, you've built a couple of different anatomy master's classes, right? Yes. It's been evolving. <laughs> yeah. But so it's, yet- how did it, what was the first iteration? That was like a, that was an instructor led version, right? About yeah. A year ago. So, Exactly. We had, it, I think it was, it was February a year ago, but I started um, doing, just putting the developing content for an anatomy class because the original curriculum for the academy had anatomy lessons, but it went super fast. Mm-hmm. And I think it was just difficult to really get a good grasp on the, on the topic. So um, I started developing a master's class, which was an instructor led version, mm-hmm. um, which went well. And people, you know, people really liked it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as of course, uh, we were, it was time to kind of offer it again. I was revising it. Mm -hmm. And, um, one of the feedback, some of the feedback we got from the first time is we had so many people say, oh man, I'd love to take that class, but I can't make the time. Um, you know, cause we would just meet over zoom and have calls and, and have class that way. Um, and so, you know, that's when we sort of started developing this idea that maybe we could make it into a, a self-paced online learning kind of curriculum. Mm-hmm. And that actually, when we kind of put that out on the Slack channel to the coaches who we currently had in the academy, that got a lot of positive feedback. Right. And so that's when we sort of decided to start developing it into an online format. One of the things I've always uh liked about the classes that you've developed is that you are uh very interested in creating different learning modalities i guess you'd call it for people you know in my mind anatomy has always been one of these subjects where you basically uh create flashcards and memorize a bunch (laughs) of bones and ligaments and joints and muscles and um and that's just the way you got to do it and Uh, what I think is pretty cool about the classes that you've created is that you have gone out of your way to develop, you know, half a dozen or more different learning strategies. Where, how did you pick up those different learning strategies along the way? What, what, what brought that to your attention as a useful way to learn? Yeah. So, I mean, let's face it, you can probably learn anything on the internet if you have some determination. So the information that you need to know is out there but it's scattered and you have to Mm -hmm. dig for it. And I think too, anatomy is one of those topics that you really have to engage yourself in for over a long period of time for it to really become part of you. And Mm -hmm. I think just interacting with students, both with the academy and with my first class, it kind of became apparent that, you know, the way that organized instruction can help an adult learner is to make it easy and make their time spent learning the subject very efficient. And I think the way that, you know, adult learners are different than than children learners is that they kind of already have some experience that they bring to the table, right? It's not like Uh they're, they, whether, I mean, we see that in the academy, we have people with a variance of backgrounds, like some people that are already coaching 
Some people have had some formal education as exercise physiologists. Some people are engineers and know nothing about anatomy. So we have all of these various types of adults who have valuable experience and they, it's not like they don't bring anything to the table where you have to start from scratch to learn something. But what they are looking for is an organized way to take the experience that they have and get a new experience to bring those together and kind of assimilate the knowledge into who they are as a coach or a lifter or whatever, as they take the class. And so what I found was memorization happens a little differently for, you know, an, a 10 year old than it does for an adult. Mm. <laughs> 10 year olds can memorize pretty fast, uh, but they're not holding as much in their head. Right. So with an adult learner, I think you have to give them, um, a variety of ways to interact with the material. Mm-hmm. And through that, basically you're creating experience for them to connect it to themselves and to their own experience. And so one of the things I try to do is, is make it very visual, which is why I actually ask people to draw anatomy, yeah, which is those like are some of the, the coolest <laughs> things that I've seen come out of the, the class. Yeah, some of these drawings I love are just it. amazing what people are able to do. Yeah. So some people are artists, right? So, right. um, I, Salman of Miami Barbell is amazing. You're, uh, uh-huh. I've actually asked him if I could use some of his drawings cause they're like stellar, like really yeah. beautiful. Shout out to Salman, Barbell Logic clients and uh, right. Academy and signed up for multiple master's classes. I think that's right. And, He's yeah. all about educating himself. He's doing great. <laughs> and then there's other people who are like, I feel like my drawing looks like a third graders right. and that's okay. I, that's what I was going <laughs> to ask. You know, we often, share pictures, particularly of Salman as an example, uh, you know, or like, you know, these really elaborate, beautiful drawings. Do you like, what are, what are, what about the people that are doing the third grade version? Is that still, uh, do they find that still useful? And yes, it's uh, totally legit. Um, yeah. because if you are using the more senses you use, and we know this about, about learning, sure. the more senses that you use, the more you're going to retain. And so, right. um, actually, a chicken scratch drawing of the quadriceps on a napkin is helpful, right? So, right. Uh, and that's what I get sometimes, which is okay because they're adult <laughs> learners. Uh, but I can still see in that drawing and in Selma's drawings, you know, that that information is coming out. Um, right. And so, right. It, but it stretches a lot of folks. Like people are really nervous to submit that first drawing to the class. Usually, it's the assignment, um, especially if they don't feel confident in themselves. But the point is learning it. Right. So, um, that's one of the things we do. We do lots of, of, we actually do games, (laughs) online games, but also just interacting with flashcards, um, to really make anatomy knowledge your own. You have to be able to visualize it as well as rote memorization of, you know, the attachments and insertions. But if you spend the time doing that, you start looking at lifting differently. Mm -hmm. And so it really, it really can change, you know, your perspective on your, on your job as a coach or on the way that you look at your own lifting and exercise, it makes you better able to problem solve for people when they're having difficulty. And so I've, I've really enjoyed it. Like I've seen my students start to connect more dots than they had before, even if they've been through the Academy, like when they go through the anatomy class, they're like much more quick to recognize what's going on with someone. I think it's just really valuable, but it takes time. Right. right. And adult learners don't have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the thing is, is trying to organize the material in a way that the adult learner could come on their own time, mm-hmm. spend 15 very valuable minutes of interacting with the material in a lot of different ways. And then, you know, slowly start making it their own. Yeah. It's, and that's one of the other things that I've noticed, uh, with you, you just mentioned 15 minutes as I've watched you iterate from, the first master's class instructor led, then you did another instructor led earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Then we did a beta test OLE online learning environment version. And you each time have, uh, it seems kind of made the, the chunks of information smaller and smaller. Um, I'm curious what that kind of learning process was for you in iterating the, the curriculum to the point where now we're, uh, we've just launched actually in the last week a uh, you know a new OLE version uh, for lower extremity. So talk right. to me a little bit about that process and kind of how you got to what we're offering now. Yeah, so I, I think the primary feedback was just watching students go through the course mm-hmm. and seeing them 
you know, kind of lose steam. So me and my passion for anatomy, <laughs> the mm-hmm. first class, I was like, we have to learn everything about everything. And so mm-hmm. it, it was super content heavy and clunky, probably. Although I think mm-hmm. the students who went through still got a lot out of it, but I know they missed a lot because I just was like throwing so much at them. Right. Um, and it's not what I, what I've sought to do each time actually is break it up into smaller pieces so that it more easily fits into an adult learner's life. So you're going to, if you want to just focus, if you really want to learn the hip as an example, mm-hmm. it's better to think about the hip for a month or two than to think about it for a week, right? You're mm-hmm. going to learn more about it. You right. can, and that's the other thing I've wanted to, to do with the online curriculum is making the material repeatable so that you can go back, requiz yourself, redo things yourself, because those little those little points of contact is actually much more how an adult learner learns because you're taking the pieces of what you are and you're assimilating it into what you do every day. And I think that, um, you know, it's much more valuable to really, really learn something than to like just, you know, get 10% of it when you buy a class. Like when you purchase right. the class from us, I want you to feel like, wow, I poured, I, I went through this program and I feel like I really got a lot out of this piece of it. And and adult learners usually are, you know, ready to learn for the rest of their life. That's the kind of people we look for at Barbell Logic, right? We're all about right. like that learning culture. Mm-hmm. So why not take smaller pieces that people can digest on their own time? It, it was interesting too, because I think last time you were, we were talking about it, you also mentioned not just the course itself wanting to be smaller in, in content or like more focused but also even within the curriculum that you developed for the, for the OLE, st- uh, building it so that the, the um, student feels a consistent um, series of wins, you know, like they're, you know, the, even the assignments are broken up into smaller pieces so that they, you know, there's momentum that they build and that the, even though it's an uh, asynchronous online learning environment, there's still a sense of, you know, making progress and completing things and that the, the OLE process can, uh, is designed to keep the student motivated, you know, when, even though they're working on their own. Absolutely. I think we do that as coaches with training too, right? Like, right. I mean, that's what we do for, that's what sometimes we do for our clients as well. It's, it's a long process to get strong. Right. It's a really long process. It, I mean, it, and, but you have to feel like you're making progress along the way, yeah. you know, or, or it's hard to stay motivated to keep training because it's hard work. It's really hard right. work. Well, right. it's the same with learning. It's, it's fun to, to scratch the surface, but to really learn something takes a little bit of discipline and practice. Right. So, you know, take a chunk, master it, then move on. I think that's a better strategy for, for online learning. So specifically right now, if you go to barbelllogic.com and click on coach development, you head over to our master classes offering in the uh, coaching and academy section. You'll find that we are now offering a functional anatomy for strength coaches, lower extremity. And that is our first uh, iteration of this uh, OLE uh, format. Um, So can you talk to us, talk, talk a little bit about why you chose the lower extremity, you know, and what, what the class offers for the, for a student that would sign up for this. Yeah. So, um, I, I chose the lower extremity first because I feel like it is probably maybe the most injury prone area, although you could say the shoulder is too, but, um, basically when you're learning to coach the squat or the deadlift, super helpful to understand those muscle groups for biomechanics. And actually what I'm really excited about is I think, you know, our Academy core team is kind of going to build more of these master classes. Mm-hmm. I think biomechanics might be the next one. And of mm-hmm. course we're going to do upper extremity for, um, anatomy as well. But, um, basically this course is, uh, every, there's a kind of prerequisite of, of, um, basic anatomy, um, intros topics that you go through. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once you get through that, you're actually going to go into the hip, then the knee, then the shank and foot. And each, each lesson is going to take you through, you know, the bones of those joints, what kind of joint it is, um, the muscles, you're actually going to take a lot of time to, to work with the muscles, practice the muscles, draw the muscles. Then we actually talk about common injuries 
for those specific areas and just some coaching strategies of how to work around them. In a little education too about what they are, what you might find. Not in not in a sense that we are going to turn coaches into into complete rehab specialists, but mm-hmm. I think one of the things that keeps a coach from being confident in how to coach the lifts is actually nervousness that they're going to hurt someone or just being able to recognize when you can train through something and when you can't. Um, right. So just like, you know, people tend to either eat too much or too little. I think people who are trying to rehab themselves tend to do too much or too little. And I think a job as a coach is to kind of help you navigate that. Like, when do you really need, you do need to call the doctor. When do you just need to be patient? When do you need to let healing take place? When do you need to get off the couch? That kind of thing. (laughs) Right. Yeah, that's cool. So it's not just a anatomy 101 kind of class or anatomy masterclass. It's anatomy with application to barbell coaching. Absolutely. And that's been my vision from the beginning is Mm -hmm. every application question that we talk about with these muscle groups is about barbell training. And so it's very, it's not just like, I'm going to memorize the muscles. It's, it's for coaches. It's a class for coaches. Um, and I, I think too, like, like for instance, for the hip, we talk about impingements. We talk about hip replacement. We talk about just the, the general abnormalities you might see that may Mm. affect how you even coach someone to pick the right stance or not. Right. Um, right. So like, because anatomy has direct impact on that coaching wise, we, we spend a, we spend time talking about those as practical examples. Yeah. It's, it's been interesting, you know, as I've worked with you or as uh, on, when we're on Slack dealing with different injuries, how much you and some of the other coaches that are more versed in PT take into account the, those variations and solve problems based on an, an anatomical understanding of right. what's happening at the joint. You know, if, if somebody is experiencing some pain or some, you know, certain movement patterns and are, you're able to make adjustments that take into account what's happening, happening at the anatomical level. And it, right. it, it makes a, it's still, I mean, it's kind of like programming in the sense that you never know a hundred percent what the answer is going to be. Um, particularly when it comes to pain or injury, but it gives you a starting point to test a hypothesis. It seems like that's kind of what I've, what I've seen and what, and what I've done more so as I've built confidence as a coach is very similar again to programming where you look at things from a, an analytical perspective, look at the anatomy, try to troubleshoot and diagnose what a, what the symptom might be coming from and make an adjustment and then test it. Is that, right. is that fair? Or is that kind of yeah, how Yeah, no, I think things? that's true. I think it's true because I, I think, I mean, we're asking people to train with heavy mm-hmm. weights. Mm-hmm. And so injuries are going to happen. Tweaks are going to happen. And how do you know if this is something that, you know, needs to, to needs to, you know, sideline them for a couple of weeks, or is it something they need to go to the doctor for? Like, I think, you know, we're, healthcare is becoming more expensive to be honest. And so, I mean, even like physical therapy copays are higher and higher. Mm. And is it something that a person can actually just work through with a little bit of guidance? Like, you know, whether, you know, let's shorten the range of motion. Let's, let's rest this. Let's just deload it a little bit. But I think when a coach, and I think experienced coaches do do this, they, they've seen it before. They understand that the person's probably going to feel better in three to five days. And so you just have to make some modifications to the program. They actually have seen that, you know, cocaine deadlifts help with back pain, you know, like it it actually may help it feel better faster because you're pumping blood to the area. So there's some really basic things that as you become an experienced coach, you can, you know, you can try it. It's not going to hurt the person and it may help them. And I think just having more weapons in your arsenal as a coach makes you more confident to not hit the panic button when someone comes to you and says something hurts. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because we talk a lot about the the avatar for our academy and uh, as the core coaching uh, or the core curriculum team. And a lot of the students that we see coming through are looking for what CJ will call permission to coach. You know, yeah. they're, they're looking for enough knowledge, enough experience, enough validation that they are not going to hurt somebody or that they're doing it quote unquote right. And that and that's something that we do at the academy over the course of the six-month curriculum. 
I think people come out of that feeling like they have permission to coach. And I kind of, what I'm hearing when you describe that uh, and what people can get out of this class is it's almost like a sense of permission or like the, the coach may feel more confident or like they have permission to work through some of these kind of um, tweaks or mm -hmm. setbacks that people might encounter that are totally yeah. normal part of training um, and that any coach, every coach that's working with a client is going to encounter somebody that tweaks their back or tweaks their knee or this hurts or that hurts and uh, kind of helps people feel uh, or helps coaches feel like they've got, you know, maybe permission to work around some of those things. Right. And I think one of the things that makes you nervous to try to help someone through an injury is maybe you're not sure what's good pain and bad pain, mm -hmm. what's, what's dangerous and what's not. And I think that's one of the things, cause, cause we obviously don't want to go to the other extreme too. I have unfortunately seen some strength coaches, like try to take someone who had a knee replacement like two weeks ago and try to get them squatting. And it's really too soon. So, right, you know, right. we go over some of those basic things, like what, how long does it take soft tissue to heal after surgery? Like those types of things so that you at least feel a little more confident to guide someone. You're certainly not giving medical guidance to anyone, right, but let's right. face it. Like you don't run to the doctor for every single little thing. And so as a strength coach, if you're trying to help someone navigate this process of becoming healthier and stronger, mm -hmm. you're going to have to help them navigate some of those things. And, and you don't want to, you don't want to go to the extreme where you just like think you can fix everyone either. Cause we definitely don't want to do that. But, um, and nor are we trying to practice like physical therapists, but I think a good strength coach has some tools to try when their client has something come up that's, you know, painful or wrong or a tweak. But if you know, and you're pretty confident, like this is something I, that's out of my scope of practice and they can go to someone else versus like, I'm just afraid to try anything. Like that's right. what a good strength coach can do. Right. They can kind of navigate that, that mountain. Cause people are very different and, and anatomy is very different. And that's, and the more you recognize, I think we look at a coach who doesn't really recognize differences in anthropometry at first, when they first learn to start coaching right. the squat, they think right. someone's too upright or too, too horizontal. It can be the same thing with an injury. You're like, it right. can look the same to you at first. And so you start looking a little deeper and recognizing like, ah, oh, this probably isn't that bad of a tweak. If they can move around like this and they can do that. And you're like, Hey, right. let's try this. And they do fine with it. Then the trainee is confident to take the next step. And so are you. So that's what this class is kind of designed to do. And it's, it's interesting. You mentioned that, um, one of my best friends is a oral surgeon. And every once in a while, I've, I've talked to him about anatomy and he's, and I was, I think I was talking about to, uh, netters at one point and how useful those drawings were and cool. And, and he said, yeah. And he said, one of the most amazing things about that is that, uh, you know, everyone's anatomy is different. And yeah. so he was able to create these images that make things look like everything's in its place. And like, he's sort of netter sort of compiled from, I think, I believe doing a lot of autopsy work and cadaver work, mm -hmm. these images that are very easy to digest mentally. But in reality, every single human has a, has, things are sl in a slightly different place or slightly yes. different shape. Yes. To me, that's the most fascinating part about anatomy. Um, and in getting ready for this class, because actually anatomy most of the anatomy drawings you see, like x-rays are pretty easy to find or mm -hmm. like pictures of, of real bones and things like that. But, you know, most anatomy sources are an artist's rendition of what the body looks like. So right. that's why I actually encourage students to look at a lot of different ones because it, it looks, it looks surprisingly different, like from one artist to the next, Right. not just in my class, either, just but like, like real people who published anatomy sources, like it can look very different. And so if you're studying just one source, you may not actually be getting a good mental visual picture of what it is like. Um, mental model. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and one of the fun things that actually has happened this week is I actually was like, Hey guys, I need some calf meat for pictures. I, I like pulled <laughs> the black coaches. Um, and so everyone was having fun with it and kind of flexing their calves and posting pictures <laughs> to me to use for the class. Yeah. But even with that, it's amazing. The anatomical difference between our black coaches who train, right. Who have like pretty strong legs compared to the average population. There's amazing differences in how the soleus and the plantaris and the gastrocs are even aligned and attached yeah. on the, on the limbs. So it's pretty fun. We might actually just put in a game like match the calf with the block coach, which, which coach, which block right? coach has <laughs> these chicken legs? Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to out the coach that, uh, 
who is ridiculously strong, by the way. We so have a coach strong. That so strong. Is a, uh, he's a lightweight. You know, he's, a, he's, I think, under 200 pounds, but squatting something on the order of like three or four times body weight. <laughs> Um, just ridiculously strong, but has zero calves. <laughs> it's yeah, just like the calves, a tube. <laughs> <laughs> the calves are, are like a mystery because, um, like you've, I've heard some people say that if you've been heavier, you have bigger calves, like it's a mm. weight thing, mm-hmm. but I don't think that's true across the board. I've seen some pretty thin people with like gigantic calves and some heavy people with small calves. So, um, th- it's a very interesting, and we actually go into the class about like the difference between the soleus and the gastrox and fast twitch fibers and slow twitch fibers. Cause there is a big difference between them, but, um, those are the types of things that if you kind of become more familiar with when you watch someone move, it makes more sense. Right. So out of this class, do you think people will be able to learn how to grow their calves? Well, I do if I knew how to do that, I would um, be, <laughs> be rich be because yeah. I know like even my husband would probably like to have that happen. Um, but and he's very strong too, crazy strong. But yeah, it, the calves are a, a difficult and interesting one to train, but they definitely can take tons and tons of volume for sure. They can be very functional even though they're small. <laughs> we've uh, we've talked a little bit about like conceptually what the class is is like and I don't know if you mentioned it yet, but you've actually just started a new role uh, as a curriculum oh, yeah. curriculum developer. So you're going to be doing more and more of these OLE, uh, these online learning environment classes. Can you share a little bit about you know, maybe the more more of the mechanics of not just this class but the future classes? Like, what is it that uh, you know? What platform are we using? What's it going to feel like for the student to uh, to sign into the website and like what does that look like? Right. So. So I'm super, first of all, I'm super excited about the newest version of the Academy curriculum too. It's been really awesome working with CJ and you and Carl, like developing that it's, I think it's, it's a great improvement. And I'm, I mean, it was only the first kind of rough draft. So those of you that are going through it, those students that are going through it with rough draft, thank you. But, uh, it's actually pretty good already. And I'm really excited about how good it's going to be. Um, so we are going to have, parts of that curriculum be in this online format. Um, But also what we hope to do is we have this great collection of coaches at Block that have all these different areas of expertise. And so Mm -hmm. what we want to have happen is we want to make their knowledge more capturable to everyone out there so they can actually go onto the Barbell Logic website. They can buy a class. It's going to go right into your cart. As soon as you um, purchase the class, you begin learning at your own pace. So the class will be open to you. With all those things that I've learned as far as how adult learners learn, we want to make all of it super interactive, something that you can invest just a little bit of time in each week or each each day, depending on how fast you want to go through it. It's your pay, your own pace. And you're going to gain, you know, something very practical that you can take to your lifting, your coaching. Um, and and at both, we're, we're talking about topics like nutrition, biomechanics, probably some injury specific ones, really when we think of who we have at Black as far as the knowledge of coach, the experience of coaches that we have, there's a ton of things we can be doing with online education. And so I'm super excited. My role is um, curriculum developer. And just because I have a little bit of leg up on everybody else with like the actual class um, nuts and bolts, like how to build a class, I'll actually just be the person who takes the content another coach writes and helps them develop it into an online class. And so, so that's that gonna be my role. the student then would, I mean, I'm just trying to get down to the, like the nitty gritty. They're going to, they log into the website and then it's like, do they have to download an app or is it, it's like all through our website? Oh no, the beauty what, of it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the beauty of it is you put it in your cart and it's right on the website. So you just okay. go back into the website. You have a login with, you know, your name and password. Once you get in there, uh, the page will pop up your courses that you're enrolled in. You can actually enroll in more than one at once if you'd like. And you click on that particular course that you're enrolled in and you go to the next lesson or the next topic or wherever you were, it's going to save your place. When you stop, you're going to be able to go in, mm-hmm. you know, log back out, log back in. You have 10 minutes, go in, do, do a lesson, stop. Um, it's very, very user friendly for people to use and, and it's completely at your own pace. So one of the faults of our, um, our master's, class education in the past has been that people want to take the class, but they might live on the other side of the world and it's nighttime whenever they want to take the class so they can't, 
or, you know, it's in the middle of work, whatever, this is actually going to be accessible to everyone immediately as soon as they buy it. And you can log in, log out, and it's right there on the Barbologic website. And what kind of, you know, one of the things I've noticed is that you've created a lot of different content and, and again, learning strategies. You know, what does, what would a student expect to interact with? Um, since they don't have an instructor to talk to, what have you done to try to make it more interactive in that format? Right. So there's still, there still are like assignments to turn in. Um, okay. So you might upload a drawing, for example, for anatomy, but there are instruct like short instructional videos. Um, there's also matching and learning activity games. There's actually video breakdown that you can like hover and go step by step through a lift and I kind of understand why this person's experiencing hip impingement, for example, um, for the anatomy class. So we're hoping to use there's lots of different visual presentations of the material as well. So if you look at something and the concept does not pop out at you right away, you're going to be able to look at it in a different way. And hopefully that's going to help as well. And there's still a way to contact the instructor for, with questions. So like if you really stuck, right. you know, there's, you can still, there's an email address to contact someone and, and get, get some help with whatever concept you might be stuck with. And we're still inviting everyone who's taking this into our, Academy Slack channel as well. So people will be able to interact with the other, the broader Academy population. Correct. Yeah. And that's a, that's a huge asset as well. Like if you're out there and you want to coach barbell lifts and you don't really know very many other coaches who co who want, who coach the barbell lifts the way that you want to coach them, taking an online class and getting into that community is such a precious resource because we have so many coaches who are, you know, going from starting, wanting to start up a business and how do you do that? How do you start an LLC? How do you do like, you can ask any question to any coach in our network, which is a huge asset to buy one of our classes. Awesome. Well, um, what, uh, where can people find you Becca, if they want to, are you, uh, are you on the social medias? And I am on Instagram. <laughs> I am at Becca and barbells. So it's spelled B E K A H and barbells. My gym is called Krieg strength, K R I E G, um, strength. And we actually, that's our website name as well. So if you want to look us up on the web, we're in the middle of Pennsylvania. So come and see us. If you are in our area, you can also, uh, email me at rkrieg at barbellogic.com if you have questions about the education experience specifically. Very cool. And then like we said, the functional anatomy for the strength coach lower extremity is available at barbellogic.com on our coaching development page. Go look that up if you are interested in trying out our online learning environment. We also are going to be launching a new Facebook group for Coaching Academy folks. So stay tuned and uh, keep your eye eyes out for that. Anything else we want to make sure people know about? I guess stay tuned also for more master classes coming out soon that you're going to be working on. Um, like yes, I've about. actually already got asked about that. So we, awesome. I'm, I think I would anticipate that we're we would launch at least two to three more classes by the end of 2020. Awesome, very cool. And then and then uh, on the roadmap is also going to be a full launch of the academy curriculum in this format as well as so what we'll be building towards. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Very excited about that. Thank you for uh, taking time out of your Saturday morning to uh, chat about this. Really excited to see how things go. And uh, to the listeners, thank you for listening to another episode of Barbell Logic. Hope you have a great uh, weekend, Father's Day weekend. All Shout out to all the dads out there. And, Happy Father's uh, Day. We will uh, see you next time on Barbell Logic. <laughs>